Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, Pole to Pole. All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. This is a special edition when I'm interviewing a good friend of mine who I haven't seen since 2019, yeah. Mr. Chris Ramsey. How are you, sir? How's it going, man? It's good to good. see you again, Ken. you too. Yeah. Absolutely. Chris is from the UK, and we met up at the fully charged uh, stuff antics that started, I think, in 2018. <laughs> yeah. Which definitely. was the first one, right? And been following your, your success. Now, Chris is the, uh, he's, you're a British adventurer, yeah. and you're a Guinness World Record holder as well. You're going to tell us about that. But we're here to talk about pole to pole, and it's the ultimate electrical vehicle vehicle expedition. I got to get that. It's a mouthful, <laughs> right? So, you know, I'm excited to be able to hook up with you as you're transiting before the start of your journey. But tell us a little bit about yourself and that and that Guinness World Record holder for people who don't know who you are. Yeah. So my journey began about a decade ago, ten years ago. Um, I was working my job, and mm -hmm. I was an advert popped up on my computer screen for a Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Way back then, the 24 kilowatt hour Nissan wow. Leaf. And this is when, 2012? That would be right about, yeah, 2012. 2012, 2013, yeah. yeah. So that's a pioneer in those days, right? It was, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, that was what, real world range yeah. for us, about 60, 60 miles. Yeah. Um, so I was curious. I'm, I love my cars. Yeah. I, I, you know, I still do. I still have a, 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 a appreciation for both. Yes. But, um, I borrowed a Nissan Leaf. Mm -hmm. my, my brain likes to understand things yeah. and, and really dive into it. So what I did was I borrowed a Nissan Leaf from a local dealer and I drove 1,800 miles around the UK wow. for a long weekend. Wow. Back then, there was about 60 charges in the whole of the country. Wow. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare. Try you had no grays until that. No, I'm just Yeah, kidding. exactly. <laughs> um, pretty much I didn't. Um, but no, so we, we did that. I mean, I did it with a friend. Mm -hmm. we, were, we basically were doing everything, dangling extension cables out of hotel windows to charge the leaf um, and everything. Oh, wow. yeah. and, but the I, good old days. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I'm still, do, I'm still doing it now mm -hmm. on my adventures, right? So, but I loved it. I just loved the technology. Mm -hmm. I just, I really got the fact that the technology was coming and this right. was the future. So I, so I did that and yeah. I came off that trip. I, yeah. bought a, I bought a Nissan Leaf. Mm -hmm. um, I still have that Leaf today. It's 24, that was... Um, Took a little bit of research, yep. but then by the time I bought it, it was 2014. Yeah. So that car, 24 kilowatt hour, uh, wow. Leaf Techno is still yeah. sitting on my drive. But there, yeah, so from there I shared that journey on social media yep. and, and people kind of went, wow, this is like an EV being put through an extreme situation, mm -hmm. but being put mm -hmm. into real world and yep. kind of showing the good and the bad at that sure. time. Absolutely. Um, and that kind of been the kickoff for me. And I just started doing that. I did loads of endurance drives mm -hmm. um, in different cars, mainly the Leaf. Um, and then a friend of mine turned around to me and said one day, you should do something on an e-bike. And I thought, okay. Um, mm -hmm. About a week of research, um, and I saw that the Guinness World Record for the longest distance on an e-bike in 12 hours was just over 100 miles. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, I reckon I can Give that, that a go, right? Yeah, yeah. I reckon yeah. I can be that. Yeah. So I, I got a bike. Um, with everything that was going on, there was loads of talks mm -hmm. and various things going on about the Mongo Rally. So I literally got two days of practice on, on a bike on the e-bike, um, I've got a race track, yep. uh, a running track near where I am, and I yep. just cycled around that for mm -hmm. four hours at a time. Um, and so I got like, a little bit of practice, and then I went down to uh, a place called the Grampian Transport Museum, okay. which has a closed track. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my Mongol Rally Leaf is now living ah, as, a, okay. as a museum. So I went there, and I yep. basically did the Guinness World Record. Wow. And in 12 hours, I did just over 178 miles. Nice. Wow. And so I broke the record. And then, um, but a lot of people know me from, and yourselves from 2017 when yep. myself and my wife Julie drove yep. the Mongo Rally. Mm -hmm. So 10,000 miles um, from London to, it used to be Ulan Bator in mm -hmm. Mongolia, yep. hence the Mongo Rally. Yep. But now they, they finish in Ulan Udi, which is southern Siberia, which oh, is okay. just north of Ulan Bator. Okay. Yep. But it's still 10,000 miles. Wow. You cross places like, you know, like 14, 15 countries, mm -hmm. including we cross the whole west to east of Kazakhstan. Okay, Kazakhstan yeah. is like the size yeah. of Europe to get yeah, all together. Yeah, it's big. People don't realize that. So yeah. from Turkey to southern Siberia, 6,000 wow. miles near wow. enough, we had no charging infrastructure. We were literally just turning up like to places like this, for example, and saying, can we plug into your yeah. plug socket? Yeah. And we'd stay there for four hours, yeah. get a bit of charge, move on, 
and then we'd basically stop for the night and it was in petrol stations in the middle of nowhere mm. um, plugged in 12 hours get some sleep yeah. wow. um, and we just did that all the way through and for 6,000 miles we basically got turned down twice oh, wow. in that whole time wow. so people in Georgia Azerbaijan yeah. Kazakhstan yeah. Russia they were all so welcoming and nice. we got loads of charges so if, if you just look at purely the how the technology yeah, advanced in, yeah. in the space of 10 years yeah. we've gone from cars that do well a single car that does like about 60 miles mm -hmm. up to now as you say so many models available yep. and they have anything up to like 300 mile one yeah talk, i'll talk kilometers yeah oh, 500, can, 500 yeah. kilometers range you know as kind of table um, stakes now yeah right? and that's yeah. just that's just becoming the normal and you've got the lucids and and then the model s's and stuff yeah. that are pushing six seven eight hundred nine hundred kilometer ranges it's and, and that's what that's what really hooked me about the technology yeah. it's just it's so fast i mean think about how far the combustion engine has has traveled yeah. in in this what 100 100 plus years mm -hmm. compared to like the, the evs done that in like less than 10 years that's which is true. just mind-blowing so you did this Mongol and you proved everything, the uh, drive to Mongolia, that is great, but you had this itch that wouldn't go away because I know you a little bit. And Chris is thinking, what else can I do? So that must have been the genesis to kind of get you to this point. You know, what, yeah. was, the, 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 what was the reasoning to get to the pole to pole? It, it's kind of, it was kind of, to a certain extent, it was by accident. Mm -hmm. So okay. my bedroom wall is a giant map of the world. Yeah, nice. And so I sit there at my desk and this wall here yeah. is like just a giant map. And um, I was just seeing and researching what I could do next. Yep. Because the, the main thing we do is education, mm -hmm. right? As we said, it's, yep. it's kind of, we travel through these countries, we educate people about electric cars. We yep. don't, we never preach to people. We just say, hey, look, here's the technology. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. This is what the capabilities are. And the idea behind it is just to kind of share that knowledge and get rid of some of those myths, yep. as you're saying, that are still uh, standing today. So yep. we do that and we travel through these countries and we share it all on social media. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what could we do that challenges it even more mm -hmm. to really try and put that nail in the coffin, so to speak, of all of these myths? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens is people say cold weather. Yep. Yes, it impacts battery range. I'm not going to say it doesn't. Here we are, March in Sudbury, Ontario. It's not. <laughs> this, it's nice today, but yeah. it's usually not I mean, this, this nice. Is, this has been a baptism of fire here <laughs> yeah. in Canada. It's been, it's been an incredible drive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, so we looked at that and th I looked at that and thought, what could we do that brings them all together? Yeah. Long distance, battery charging, Different terms of different forms of charging, but also cold. And yeah. I did look at just going north to south, mm -hmm. yep. um, and just going like from southern tip of north, uh, southern tip of Argentina yep. up to the northern tip of Canada. Yep. And I thought, great, people have done it though, uh, in EVs. And mm -hmm. I thought that doesn't capture imagination. Yeah. Because one thing I find with all these adventures, yep. and with me being inspired by a lot of adventurers as well, is kind of when you do something bold and pioneering, it captures. A broad range of people's imaginations. Yes. So, and that gets a lot of people involved, a lot of people interested in looking at it, and then it educates a, a bigger, wider audience. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what could we do to go further? And I was looking up and down at the map, and then my eyes just went a bit further north. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, hmm, the poles up there. So I looked yeah. at north, and then I then I thought, okay, what about south? Mm -hmm. It's like Antarctica. Yeah. And so I just did a little bit of research. Yeah. Spent a few days kind of researching it and thinking it through. Um, and then I thought maybe I could go from, from a mag north location yep. to the South Pole. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a number of projects to try to cross the South Pole in yes. like solar powered cars and various right. things, and it's, they've never worked out. So I thought about what could I do uh, to be a bit different. And I spoke to Arctic Trucks, mm -hmm. the guys at Arctic Trucks. This was four years ago. Wow. Um, it's okay. been four years in the planning. Lots so of planning. Yeah. We've, we've given this a lot of thought, uh -huh. in case people were wondering. Yeah. Um, and we spoke to those guys, and they were like, yeah, we, we see that the future of our expeditions has to be electric. We right. need to be, we need to tread more lightly in those regions. Mm -hmm. So they said, look, I reckon we could do this. Um, so we, I spent about six months with them kind of talking through what the vehicle would need to, how it would yep. need to be modified, what can we do, what, how we can maybe minimize the impacts of the cold on the battery, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And we kicked the project off. Nice. And yeah, it's, it's been a long, yeah. long, hard journey <laughs> at that point. It's a outside, lot of work. Yeah, outside of putting an expedition together, yeah. I mean, globally and economically, we've, we've, the whole world's faced a lot of challenges. Absolutely. So that's through mm -hmm. a, a whole bigger thing. And then I come to Canada, yeah. looking forward to the drive, and you guys throw snowstorms at me. So, um, yeah. Snow and donuts, apparently. He's getting <laughs> muffins and donuts uh, thrown at him from, uh, from people. So yeah. welcome to Canada with that. And, and that's what that's, we do. I think yeah. we touched, uh, yeah. we've touched on this before, yeah. but that's the amazing thing that we find. Uh, yeah. The human element to this. Yeah. At the end of the day, we you know we are we are strangers coming into different into people's countries into into your country, yes. and we find the hospitality that we get is just 
incredible. The car helps. Mm -hmm. You know, the car looks incredible. Um, I, I know I'm biased, but it does. It looks incredible. It does look incredible, and we're going to get out and have a quick look at it. And, yeah. and that leads me to my next question. You know, why the Aria? Why continue with Nissan on the Aria? Was it just you had a relationship, you had some mm. good things with Nissan, and you felt that that was the way to go because there's lots of vehicles out there that just was the right platform to do this? Yeah, there's, there's kind of two stories to it, really, mm -hmm. in, in the fact that, yes, the, the journey with Nissan, is mm -hmm. I wanted to work with Nissan because yep. I know the team, yep. have a good relationship exactly. with them, as you say, and I know the technology really well. Mm -hmm. um, and so going from the Leaf to the Aria was just a natural progression. Back four years ago, the Aria didn't exist. That's right. Yeah. Um, so when I approached um, Nissan about the project at the time, they either couldn't tell me about the Aria yeah. um, or essentially the Aria didn't exist. So we did yeah. look at a couple other companies. The, the Aria is like literally, it's, it's come from Japan. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was, there was very few available in the UK. They've only just, they were only just planning to be delivered That's in right. the UK at that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So it came from Japan, did a little bit of uh, modification to get it UK registered. Mm -hmm. And then it went out to Iceland straight away. So I've literally, this drive from Halifax over to Edmonton is the most time I've had with this car. It's so brand I'm, new for you, basically. I'm learning on yeah. the job. You're learning on, yeah. and you're learning to drive on the opposite side of the road for you <laughs> as normal, which is uh, which is something. You're going to be a pro at that. Um, now, for those, and we'll talk about the car in a sec, the Expedition details itself, as you mm. mentioned, magnetic north to magnetic south. It's about 17,000 miles, 27 or so thousand kilometers, whatever that math is. 14 countries and three continents. It's, yes. you know, when you think, when you break that down, you're going, holy moly, there's a lot going on there. And yeah, you know, you're going to get showered with donuts in Canada and probably, uh, you know, maybe all the cannabis stores in California will give you free gummy bears or whatever <laughs> as you're going down, you know, hospitality. But you're going to go through some pretty wild areas. And yeah. I mean that, you know, in a nice way. It's some yeah. really challenging, but great areas, you know, through Central and America and South America. You know, what are you most excited about in, in that, that scope of travel? It's... I've so much asked this happen. question. Yeah. Yeah. All my friends are saying, yeah. where are you looking forward to going yeah. to? And, and it's really hard to narrow it down know, because yeah. it's such culturally, it's mm -hmm. so diverse. Yeah. Um, I think in my head, I've got this fixation on the Andes. Because yeah. I just think the uh, Andes as a, as a mountain pass is going to be just incredible very lovely, to see. Absolutely. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. But when, when we're traveling through, I mean, it's countries I've never even thought of, like mm -hmm. Nicaragua, um, mm -hmm. Guatemala. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I know about them is for coffee. Yes, um, the coffee yes. beans, and, and that's it. So it's when we go through those countries, yeah. it's going to be just incredible as we, we effectively have a slideshow of each country and to see a little pinhole view of their life as we mm -hmm. travel through is just going to be incredible. So I think I couldn't pinpoint one exact country. Yeah, yeah. The polar regions are, are obvious. I mean, absolutely, they're a massive challenge in themselves. Handful of people that have yeah. seen those places. And so yeah. they're going to be incredible. But I think we're, we're so looking forward to traveling through the whole of the Americas because, as you said, not the sharing of gifts, but it's the people. It's yes. the people that we meet, and that's that's really what makes our adventure. Yeah, you know, and, and you've you've said this before, and and I know uh, you know we'll probably talk about it again. But that human side to this, that touch, you know, that showing that hey, we're really not that different from from these geographies. Yes, we have our own unique tastes and flares and and things, but we're all people, and yeah. you know, if we just need to kind of relax as a world and, and think about the planet, think about ourselves, and and you know, change a little bit of, of the way that we do things and it could be a much better place. And I know that that's part of your goal, yeah. your journey is to humanize this journey, right? To make it exactly. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, I've, I mean, I've analyzed every single aspect of this, this expedition mm -hmm. to try and make it as sustainable as possible. It's yeah. not going to be fully sustainable. Sure. And I will never claim that because mm -hmm. we have to use combustion transport in, in different areas. Yeah. Um, and so, but right down to the, some of the clothes we're wearing, some of the products we're using, it's all coming from plastic-free solutions. Mm -hmm. It's all coming from recycled solutions. So we're just showing everyday products that there's options out there. But equally, as you say, when we travel through all these countries, when one thing we learned and one thing that stayed with us from the Mongo Rally is when we travel through at 6,000 miles and we were just going to places and just asking if we can charge our two-pin plug, mm -hmm. um, and the amount of people that didn't turn us away and the amount of the people that had very little That's in their great. life to give. That's great. You know, it's, it know. just opened up our hearts. Absolutely. Well, you know, again, folks, you, I'll, I, I have some images that I'll inject and I'll have in the show notes, you know, website and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. You can check out what the route is from the Arctic North, you know, down through North America, the Western. You're, you're going to spend some time in the U.S., I understand, kind of doing a lap around the U.S., doing some yeah. PR stuff and yeah. seeing some nice places, going into Texas and, and Florida and these places as we, well. So we're doing it's, not, it's not a race down. Yep. This is just more of a showing the capabilities. I right? say to people, like, this is we're chasing the summers. Mm -hmm. So we're summer yep. in the Arctic, we're yep. summer in Antarctica. 
and mm -hmm. Antarctica, you can't go in there until December anyway. Okay. So okay. we've got this effectively this eight month. We're forced yeah. to take an eight month window. Okay. And which is great because we we've got a lot of school visits planned mm -hmm. in in North America. Excellent. Um, to go and speak to the kids, show them the car. Mm -hmm. Was probably going to be a few that are going to pick up in South America and Central America. Um, but the other idea behind it is that we're trying to obviously enthuse the younger generation. I think they're more enthused about taking Absolutely. climate action than than the adults, unfortunately. Well, yeah. But um, we just want to kind of go there and show them that there's yeah. possibilities. They can do anything they want in life, which is again. Exactly. And before now, we, we go out and look at that modified 2023 Nissan Aria E-Force. It's all wheel drive. We're going to go out and look at that and go for a quick drive. I do want to remind folks that um, you do have a GoFundMe page. So this is, you know, there's, there's serious money involved in doing this expedition for the amount of time and the necessities that you guys have. Um, can you give, share some more details on that? how to find you on GoFundMe. Yeah, so if um, the, probably the easiest way for people to do that is if they go to our website. Yep. So it's www.pole2poleev.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, the GoFundMe page is on there. Excellent. There's a whole story around the GoFundMe and why we're doing it. Yep. A grand mission from a grand guy, that's for sure. Well, Chris, it's great chatting with you at this part. Uh, I'm anxious to go out and look at that car, so let's go check it out. Cool. All right. Cool. All right, so we're here standing in front of the Beast. Is that what, <laughs> you, what do you have a nickname for this? I say the Beast, but what do you think? I, do, I mean, people have called it the AT39. Um, I'm just calling it the Expedition Area because it just looks cool. And where does AT39 come from? Did you so, stick that on or what? No, it's it's Arctic Trucks. <laughs> Arctic Trucks. So that's the company right. the nice Arctic Trucks yeah. did this conversion. Yeah. They have all their vehicles are AT yeah. for Arctic yeah. Trucks and yeah. the 39 because of the. 39 ah, inch tires. interesting. Okay, so, okay. Ingenuitive names. So you and Julia have to come up with a different name for this. That's part of, that's one of your objectives yeah. on this expedition is to give this thing a little bit, you know, 1839 sounds like some kind of movie that, you know, maybe Spielberg's going to do or something. So well, it is I, say, I keep else. calling it the expedition area, but yeah, yeah we've, we've got ah. plenty. We've got 10 months to figure Any out a name, right? catchy, edgy, right? <laughs> and, and new wave, right? Yeah. Everything, you got 10 months to figure it out, exactly. So, you know, uh, my folks who watched the last show, it was coverage at the uh, Canadian International Auto Show, and I was standing in front of some Arias, talking to Nissan and stuff. But, you know, I was really stoked to be able to come out and chat with you, Chris, and really get a, a, an idea of what you've done with this vehicle. You know, we've already talked about who you are and what you're doing in that, yep. but now walk us through the vehicle. So this is a standard off the production line Aria yep. um, uh, E4, so you've got all-wheel drive yep. unit, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about so that? So this is the 87 kilowatt hour version. Okay, so um, the big and, battery pack. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you say, it is, it's basically straight off the factory line. Yep. Um, this is a European edition. Yep. So this has the CCS2 ports rather than CCS1. So mm -hmm. outside of the, the driving challenge, I've got the charging challenge. Well, I noticed well. you've got the steering wheel on our side. Yes. How does that work for you in the UK? <laughs> it's a left hand, it's all, everything's all over the place. It's yeah. a left hand drive yeah. European car. So yeah. everything's all over the place. But if we, if we look at it, so obviously the first thing that everybody sees is these. Absolutely. These are 39 inch BF Goodrich KO2 tires. Mm -hmm. um, these, there's 35 inch versions on the market. These have been developed specifically with Arctic Trucks for this project. Oh, wow. And okay. they're eventually going to come onto the market, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And so what we've had to do to make these tires fit is basically, uh, if you took away this, this fender flare, about this much yep. of the bodywork has been so just been eight cut away. or so, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been cut away. Oh, and wow. so there's very little raise in the car. You'll see it's, it's a bit higher than yep. standard hour, yep. but not much. Yep. And the idea behind it is to basically re-weld, cut away, re-weld, into into the wheel frame mm -hmm. to then allow these tires just to effectively sit in and there's have a, some some travel room. There's a right? slight raise. Yeah. There's a slight raise on the suspension, uh -huh. but it's basically to minimise it to accommodate these tires. Right. And, and the idea behind these massive tires, with some people have noticed the small rims. Yes. Is because in the Arctic and in Antarctica when we're there, these tires will go down to about anywhere between three, about six to three PSI wow, of nothing. tire pressure. Wow. So that's huge, because yeah. you normally run with about 25, yeah. 35 PSI. But the idea behind it is this is, from the factory, a two and a half ton vehicle. Wow, yeah. The modifications, because I'll talk about the underneath as well. Yep. This has taken up to about 2.7, 2.8 tons. Okay, okay. So small tire pressures. Mm -hmm. It just displaces all the weight like a boat floating mm -hmm. on the ocean. Yes. It displaces all that weight, and that means we can travel across really thin ice. Um, because when we get into a Northwest Territory, we go up into Cambridge Bay, yeah. up into the Franklin Strait. Yeah. 80% of our drive there is sea ice. That's right. Yeah, you'll be on these ice roads as we, they call it in the truckers yeah, use them. I, yeah, right? I'm really yeah. looking forward to that because we, we'll yeah. be on a section of the ice trucker road. And you're road, just so. hitting it as the season's ending. So you're actually going a little risky there. So <laughs> yeah. you might have some fun there for sure. So the, the next thing that you guys won't be able to see from the camera, mm -hmm. but underneath, yep. 
and there's a lip here. Yep. And I'll just bang that. Yeah. So underneath what we've done is we've we've put like a little skid plate. Okay. Um, underneath. Yeah. So it's about about a couple of mil away oh, from okay. the battery. Yep. And what that's doing is that's protecting the underside, protecting yep. the battery, protecting yep. the the two motors front and back. Yep. Um, and just from any impact from the ice. But also, it runs the full length of the car, so it's like a sled. Oh, okay. Cuts down, yep. comes along. Okay. So whenever we go over some ice, yep. it will then slide off the ice. When, the, when nice. the weight goes forward, yep. it'll help us slide away from the ice. If you are almost bottoming yeah. out, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And wow. that's, so that adds weight. Yeah. This, the, the big tyres, yep. they add weight to the car, but yep. they, also add, they also add drag to the motor. Oh, for sure. So this has been a test for the Aria to see how it will cope with 39-inch tyres at low speeds, low tire pressures, yes. pulling it through the pulling it through the snow. Because these are factory coping. motors, right? On these, yeah. so these aren't aftermarket or custom designed no. uh, electric motors for this expedition, yeah. right? This is off the shelves. So the idea behind that is, people watching, yeah. they'll be able to see that a stock area, yeah. apart from big tires and a skid plate, yeah. has driven from a magnetic north location to the south pole, yeah. um, and all that's done really is putting big tires on it. Yeah. Arctic trucks get very angry with me because <laughs> and I say, we've just, we've just put big tires on. There's yeah. a lot more engineering work has gone into it, obviously. Yeah. It was about a four month build. Wow. It's just out of the factory, yep. tires, skid plates, right. and it's good to go. And some, some suspension changes to cope with that? No? It's stock suspension it's as well. It's still stock. Yeah. There's a slight raise right. just to give this little yep. extra ground clearance, yep. but it's stock area suspension as well. Wow. So it's really proving that this is capable yep. of the toughest trains on the planet Nice. From the factory, essentially. And interior-wise, mm -hmm. interior-wise is standard. So it's still the area inside because this is our hotel as yeah. well. For, we're 10 months <laughs> on the road. This is where we're going to be sleeping. So, Yeah, so it has to, you're right. I mean, you'll be spending a lot of time in this. It's, you know, yeah. today we're, we're, we're uh, uh, here in Sudbury uh, at a luxurious, you know, hotel, a like comfort in kind of thing. So that, that's as, as luxurious as you'll get for Pretty a lot much. of your trip, right? Because <laughs> this will be your home away from home. Um, so obviously you're going to be carrying some stuff. Are you going to throw in some stuff on the on the roof, or you've got you've got a support mechanism helping you? Right? We do. Yeah. So um, the the support for the vehicle, in in essence, for charging. So yeah. when we're in the polar regions, yeah. we're actually going to have a trailer yeah. that's going to have a five kilowatt wind turbine and some portable solar. Yeah. And the idea behind that is to try to harness as much of the Earth's natural resources. Yeah. So we can charge the area. Okay. Now, the object of this expedition is to get this car from pole to pole. Yeah. It's not to charge from renewable energy, mm -hmm. but the idea, from my perspective is I wanted to try and minimize mm -hmm. our CO2 impact as mm -hmm. much as I can on this project. Sure. Hence why I'm driving this car from Halifax to Edmonton yeah. just now. Yeah. I could have put it on the back of a truck. That's right. That's not the object of the project. Yeah. Um, so while we're there, we're going to be charging as much as we can from, from wind and solar. Mm -hmm. So we can travel through those regions not using fossil fuels or yep. as little fossil fuels as possible. But exactly. I've been open and honest with everybody. Um, we can't get permits to go into Antarctica or the Arctic without support vehicles. Yep. And those support vehicles are combustion engine. Yes. Um, because that's all the industry knows at the moment. That's right. Yeah. And you've, you've got to go through that process. Yeah. So yeah. we get it. Absolutely. Now for comms, you've got your, your usual, you're going to have cell, you're going to have that. I see you have yeah. your Thales. Um, I take it that's a SAT uh, comm device? Or, it is. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're working with Iridium. Yep. They have their own global satellite yes. network. Yeah. And these guys, that is basically a 0.7 of a meg connection. Okay. <laughs> but the idea behind but that is... But these guys are good too. We're going to have an interactive map. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to launch just before we start the expedition, which mm -hmm. is going to be around about the 20th to the 23rd of March. Okay. Weather dependent. Um, and the idea behind that is we're going to... When we post something, yep. whether it be a voice, a voice message, a video, a yep. blog, a, a social post, the, that connection will allow us to then broadcast that straight to our map and it will pin on the map yeah. and show everybody exactly where we took that video or that voice oh, nice. message. Okay. So it's totally interactive. Excellent. Um, and people will be able to go and check that out on pole to pole evcom yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, that'll be, that'll be fascinating. Cool. All and right, so let's look at the back here. See, now you've got lots of stuff in here, obviously, because you've got to carry stuff with you. Yeah, so this here, yep. these are actually alloy wheels. So oh, I've, got, okay. I've got four alloy wheels in here. Wow. Um, the, the wheels that are on the car, they're yep. custom made for these tires. Okay. So obviously if I have any issues, um, with alloy wheels, I need them. Yep. But also when we go into uh, into the Arctic, yep. our trailer system's just on its way to Cambridge Bay just now. Okay. So the idea behind it is I need to put two of these yep. onto the trailer. Uh, okay. So the idea was just put everything in and, yep. and cut it across. Cut it across so, and yeah. then load it up there. Are you going to have some spare tires with you as well? Um, do you see no. a need for that? No. We, okay. What we're actually going to do, um, and this is an exclusive for you, Ken. Ah. Um, what yeah. we're going to do 
is when we finished our, tr our route round in North America, which yep. we're doing effectively a whole circuit over yes. North America, we're then going to go to the Arctic Trucks office in Wyoming. Yep. And these 39s are going to get switched out to 35s. Okay. Um, yep. And that's just improve the range. Right. Um, when we go into, into Mexico and, Central, and South America, yep. there's a yeah. bit more distances between some of the chargers. And Absolutely. also, in some cases, we have no chargers. So right. we have to extend our drive. And you so won't need that big of a, a tire for the road systems yeah. there. I mean, there are some not good roads. I, I was. Yeah. <laughs> the adventurer in me was thinking, yeah. I'll, I'll leave the 39s on. It looks yeah. cool. It I want to do the whole cool. thing. Yeah. But yeah. It's, yeah, practicalities thinking, yeah. put the 35s on, okay. and then we can get better range. And then planning to put the 39s back on when you get to the bottom of Chile. Yeah. And, and so into, we, yeah. we're going to drive all the way to the southern tip yep. to Ushuaia, yep. and then we're going to turn around and we're going to go back to yep. Punta Arenas, um, and that's where we extract into Antarctica. So that's yep. where we'll put the 39s back nice. on. for the remainder of the trip. Yeah. Excellent. How far into Antarctica do you go? So we will be distance to the, the only way to south. get into yeah. the South Pole yep. for this is to go to an area called Uni, a base called Union Glacier uh -huh. and you have to fly into there. Yep. Um, so that's one of the, again, one of the very few fossil fuel yep. uh, transport we're using. Yep. Um, but when we get there, we've got about 1,800 mile drive, wow. 1,800 kilometer, kilometer drive, sorry, okay. wow. to the South Pole. Okay. Um, so we're going to finish close about, about four or five days before Christmas. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we go, yay, we finished. Right, let's turn around and drive back to yeah. Union Glacier, 1,800 yeah. kilometers again, wow. just so we can get ready for our extraction. So yeah. that's a thing that will get lost on a lot of people. Yes. It's great we're driving pole to pole, mm -hmm. um, but like this, driven from Halifax to Edmonton to start yeah. meet up with the team. Yeah. Then we're gonna drive all the way up right. from Edmonton, all the way up into Franklin Strait yeah. to get to the start. Yeah. And then we're gonna turn around and come all the way down. Yeah. And then when we hit the South Pole, we've gotta then turn around and drive 1,800 yeah. kilometers back. You've got these back. windows so, of opportunity that yeah. you can't. So it's, it's a lot bigger than night, the yeah. 27,000, 17,000 17, miles. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shows the capabilities and, and of what EVs are, absolutely, and yeah. highlights some more. And Now, before we forget to get going, you did tell me about something Sorry. that was neat in this back here. It's okay, you do what you need to do. There we go. Well, you know, Chris, can he, he can rough it better than me and better than most people, right? You've done a lot of uh, adventure stuff, but he just can't travel 27,000 kilometers without a coffee maker. Absolutely. What's going on with that? Yeah, I think I think everybody knows that I love my coffee. Yeah. So one thing you can't see just now, which is a shame. Yeah. Underneath this black rug here, yeah. we have this box, okay. and which fits into the the well. Fits into right? the well. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if people are familiar with the Tesla, yeah. um, it's always it's got this little well. Yeah. So the idea behind it, we've designed this box. Yeah. It fits into there, and it's got a leisure battery. So uh -huh. um, a couple of kilowatt hour leisure battery. Nice. It's only twelve volt battery, yep. so you can charge up. And what it's charging here is a coffee machine. Oh, so I have a it. coffee machine, so when we're at the borders for about four or five hours, I can make a coffee. Um, you can so relax good. And chill. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. And then the other thing is here in the central piece here, mm -hmm. we have to save us with different adapters for different countries right. to charge our cameras and various things. Yes. We have a bank of three pin sockets. Nice. And we have a bank of like 15 USB sockets. Wow. So we can charge awesome. loads of things there. And here we have a storage area for, we've got a wind measuring yes, equipment, that's right. so uh -huh. we can measure wind speeds. Mm -hmm. We have a weather station built mm -hmm. within that, so we can oh, record cool. all the weather oh, information wow. okay. as we travel through. Yep. But also we have an air quality sensor. Yes. So that's gonna be fitted to the car very soon. Um, so we can mo measure the air quality as we go through every single region. Good. I think one of the challenging things we're gonna find is, I think nobody's taken yes. this, this device, this air yes. quality sensor, into minus temperatures no. as much as we are. Yeah. So we're gonna go into like, well, Cambridge Bay was minus 37 the that's other day. That's right. So we're gonna be going to awesome. really, cold temperatures so we'll see if that works in that yeah. temperatures we lots of new things going on but um yeah it's going to be interesting to see maybe where some people think they're very mm -hmm. their air quality is very clean yeah it might not be as clean as what they think and some people where we think it's really bad it's yeah. not going to be as bad We're, there's all these things we can hopefully record yeah. and share with people uh, figures and, out. and maybe people are watching if like yeah. if they go onto our social media yeah. and everything if they go into at pole to pole ev uh -huh. and maybe Maybe have a chance. guess. Yeah, have a guess. Have a little contest going. You who know, do you think is going to be the best country? That's and right. And who do you think is going to be the worst? And, mm -hmm. and it's more about, not about the worst country, right. but the, like the, the air quality situation. And maybe then we yeah. can share that information with people. That's a great idea. Well, that's great. Well, I'm super excited about this. So if you don't mind, let's go for a quick drive just so I can get a sense of, of what this thing uh, feels like. Because uh, I've never been in an area that's been, wow. you know, driving before. I haven't had a chance to get some seat time yet. Oh, cool. Uh, so let's do that and go from there. What a first way to do it. Eh? For sure. All right. Cool. Let's go. All right. So we're in, I'm still going to call it the beast until you give it another <laughs> name, but uh, this is really nice. I mean, even with the big wheels and the weight, I mean, obviously the road noise is going to be more because of those big studded tires and 
and you got stuff here bouncing around as your load but this is still a really nice ride yeah are you surprised that after you've outfitted this what how comfortable of a ride it is um i i was kind of well i guess i was kind of surprised yeah. i didn't know what to expect yeah because i've never driven a car with this bigger wheels on it mm -hmm. um so it's, it was it was interesting to see how it was how it affect the ride and i mean i know if, you, if i take the hands off the wheel for a little literally a split second there and it's driving straight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's not affected the, the area at all right handling is a little bit of a difference obviously when we go around bends yes it's a little bit more floppy mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the bends yeah but no it's it drives smooth and it's nice it's gonna be a comfortable ride it is i mean we're doing 60 kilometers an hour now very minimal wind noise so it's still a very quiet car wind perspective which yeah. is great um, I like the seats are comfortable of course you know folks that have seen me do some videos on the area of the static displays it's very roomy it's got nice roominess you yep. can move the console do different things I like the Nissan display setup even in this bright sun it's shining it shows up really nice yep. I think everything's logically placed have you been able to figure it out quite nicely yeah I mean I've I'm, I've got what I've done about 1800 miles yep. to get used to it so yep. I'm kind of figuring out the best way and um, the best layout on this screen uh -huh. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a huge step up from the Leaf. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, the, I think the quality and the ride difference in this, they've taken all that learning of 10 years of the Leaf yes. and developed something pretty special. Yeah, absolutely, which is good. I mean, you know, they're, they're behind the gun a little bit, Nissan, you know, trying to play catch up now to the industry. Um, and I think they've done a great job with this. You know, again, the proof will be seeing these out on the road. And, yeah. and I know that owners are going to love it, though, because it really has a nice style to it, a nice um, size, feel, and comfort level and capability, right? You've got these, uh, Absolutely. you know, you could take the seat, uh, fold it down, lots of cargo space, sleep in it if you want to camp in it, right? Like, <laughs> you guys are going to be experiencing that. Well, this is a, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a 500 kilometer range car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but with all these modifications this is like really 200 250 kilometers yes yeah. um but 500 kilometers is you know is ample for anybody oh, nowadays absolutely is yeah but you sure. have you have a different geographical situation when driving from town to town than we do in yes. the uk yeah but i still think you know, i mean 500 kilometers that's that's rest stops isn't it? that's turn up you you don't want to be driving any more than 500 kilometers in a car without having some form of brake totally agree and a lot of people you know again forget that they they get fixated on range but it's yep. like are you actually going to drive that whole time without stopping and not needing to stop for 10 15 20 minutes yep. you know beyond that and that's all it takes for most rapid charging stops nowadays is exactly. that you know 10, 20 to 30 minutes is kind of the new norm 300 miles is kind of the new uh the new range you know yep. uh basement for for most evs so um yeah the handling this is really really comfortable i'm surprised i actually felt it like it was going to be more like a big pickup truck kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, know. you hear all the noise and everything. Yeah, it's, it's it is a comfortable space. Like I say, this, genuinely, this is like a premium hotel for us now. It is absolutely. Well, listen, I, I'm really impressed by the ride of this vehicle, even with the wheels. I mean, you could feel the wheels, you can hear them. You know, we're going into a little bit of a wind, so you can hear a little bit more noise. That's all yeah. going to be part of the part of this uh, this modifications that you've done to this. But this is really still a sweet vehicle. I think you and Julie are going to have a great time going across the, the several uh, countries and the, the multiple continents that you guys are doing in this vehicle. It's going to be a blast, and uh, it's going to be something that you will never forget. That's absolutely. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, any final thoughts for the viewers watching this episode? You know, we've talked a lot about, you know, who you are, what you're doing, where you come from, why you're doing it, the vehicle, anything kind of closing you want to leave with people? I guess, I mean, one of the things I want to leave with people is just like saying, yeah, watch, follow our journey, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, and see how we yep. get on. But like I said, take, if you can take something from the journey, a little bit of education that we've shared and, and make a simple change in your life, and hopefully it helps you enrich your life a little bit more, then, then that's great. Yeah. That's one thing. But I guess one thing we learn from all the trips that we've done is that we are, the, the human race is kind. You know, as much as what's going on in the world, we are kind. And we, we experience that so much. So just be kind and good to people. Because that's what this has taught us in all the adventures is people are good. There is good in the world. Yeah. And let's just extend that and, you know, there's people out there that may need your help one day and it could be a simple thing like charging an EV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's like just be kind and be good to people because you'll get it back. In in spades most of the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Well listen, that's great advice and great um, you know, life thoughts, Chris. I couldn't agree with you more. And that's one thing when you travel and you see especially the destinations that you've been to, some and the intimacy of some yeah. of these places and you know, really small areas. You know, uh, extreme touch points in the globe. It really, you know, humanizes and 
puts things into perspective. So thank you very much again for doing this and thank you for um, giving me the ability to come up and meet with you and have this conversation. I thought it was really important. I wanted to get the word out to you folks to check out the channel. If you know they have a GoFundMe, please support them. Any little bit that you can is going to go a long way to help uh, Chris and Julie in this in this uh, journey uh, over the next few months. Uh, it's it's a big endeavor that they've got to do, and they do need the help. Uh, if you're you know you look at their route map, if you think they're coming near you and you uh, are part of an organization that wants to help them out or get the chance to meet them reach out to their people and try to connect and have that conversation. Uh, it's a great story that Chris goes and, and talks to people on and I think you'd enjoy it quite a lot. So uh, thank you very much. The, yeah. the great thing all right. So again, thank you very much, Chris. It's been a pleasure and an thank honor to so see much. you and chat with you and wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you. you. And yeah. thank you for doing this. And thank you for sharing the story. And it's a pleasure to see you again. Yeah, it's been a long time, folks. It's been 2019, yeah. I think, is the last time. Pretty much. Base, so excellent. All right. You're skinnier and taller and wiser and I'm not. So there we go. <laughs>